Welcome everyone to Get Set Up special event, a Q&A with Wendy Mayhew, Entrepreneurship as an Encore Career. My name is Kevin. I'm a guide at Get Set Up and I'll be your host today. As a community of active older adults who are looking to stay informed and connected, Get Set Up is thrilled to have Wendy Mayhew with us to answer all of our burning questions about becoming an entrepreneur after 50. And now our special guest, Wendy Mayhew, is the author of Wiser, The Definitive Guide to Starting a Business after the age of 50. Speaker and entrepreneur with more than 40 years experience successfully launching and managing businesses across Canada. She's pioneered new practices in real estate, wine, and the education sectors before founding the communications agency Mayhew & Associates, which grew to sales of 3 million with only one employee. Based on her own experience and after seeing the need for practical business support among older demographics, she launched Wise Seniors in Business to support entrepreneurs through speaking, presentations, and online resources. Wise Senior, SeniorsInBusiness.com, Wendy's latest venture, is cross-gen founders launching this year. I'm sure we'll talk about it. A matching platform for entrepreneurs over the age of 50 to find a co-founder under the age of 40. So during our talk today, we hope to cover uh, help establish an understanding of what it takes to be an entrepreneur, provide information for those attending to think about, uh, to think before they take the leap into entrepreneurship, and at the same time, take the fear out of being a business owner. Wendy, thanks for being with us today. It's really glad to have you. Thank you ever so much for inviting me. I look forward to um, doing this session with you. Very good. Very good. Well, start off by tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get to where you are now? Now, you got to condense this down, I know, because that's like, hey, tell us your whole life story. <laughs> 40 years into one minute. <laughs> so maybe, maybe what did you do before 50? And then, you know, kind of, you know, that, 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 that kind of that pivotal point for sometimes I call it first half, second half of life. I kind of call it that way. That's kind of like, right. You don't have to retire. You just like the second half is going to be a little different than the first half. No, retirement is a dirty word for me. Um, <laughs> so I, I realized early on that I was not a good employee. Um, and so what was I going to do? Um, I decided to start my own business and I did a few things and then I moved into, you know, I worked from home. I did, and, and I don't know who all, who all is on this call that will remember a typewriter, but I used to be really <laughs> good at, at typing. And so I, that's how I started out was typing for people and doing reports and things like that. Uh, then I moved into a mini office complex um, and, and um, you know, worked there in my own little office. And then I was approached by a real estate company to purchase, it was called the Executive Suite, which was the fourth floor of a building that had 22 mini offices in it. I bought it. No. Well, yeah, I did buy it. I bought the name and rented the space and did that for about, I don't know, I guess it was three years and then everything went sour. I had had arrangements with, uh, sorry, I just see this in the chat. I was doing 90, 100. <laughs> <laughs> you were fast. <laughs> yeah. um, anyways, it, it went sour. I had arrangements with them to, you know, pay them so much money with the um, time uh, based on the number of tenants I had and whatnot. The company I had bought from changed hands. I had a new owner and they basically booted me out. So that left, it left me in dire straits. Like I was never going to be an entrepreneur again because I had put my family in debt. My mm. husband left uh, the city to go and work someplace else to help pay off the debt. Two young kids, it was, it was awful. So um, fortunately, I was very employable. And so I kept getting offers for, uh, to go and work for people. And this one company, they hired me. Uh, I decided to work with them and um, I really enjoyed the work. I really, really enjoyed the work, but I did not like working for them. I was on salary and commission. They didn't like paying me the commissions. <laughs> so just one day I got in touch with my husband. I said, I'm going to start my own business again. What do you think? And he said, uh, I don't need to think about it. Just do it. So I built that business. So I took what I had learned from that company and started my own business and built it to a $3 million a year business with just me doing it. Nice. 
Um, then I kept getting asked, am I going fast enough here, Kevin? Sorry. Yeah, you're doing good. I kept getting asked to help other people start their business. And that's when I decided that I really needed to uh, do something. Um, and so I created the Real World Entrepreneur Training which was a professionally produced video series uh, that had entrepreneurs going in front of business experts. It was licensed to um, McGraw Hill Ryerson here in Canada uh, to be used as their first all digital product. And they still license the videos to this day as an accompaniment to all of their uh, entrepreneurship programs that they have through the universities. Um, okay, and then, okay, I, I, as an entrepreneur, and I'm sure anybody that's on this call that is an entrepreneur knows that we change a lot, right? And so um, a few years ago, I was approached by Startup Canada to write an article on financing for older entrepreneurs, and I got hooked. And that's why I started working with older entrepreneurs. Very good. There you I, go. I'm, I have it in a nutshell. Excellent. No, very good. I, I being concise is a, a, a great attribute to have, right? <laughs> How do you I'm not usually very concise. <laughs> well, you, you did good there. I, I picked up a, a few things you said in there that I think are really important that help uh, encourage it. Um, you, well, the first thing you said is, I realize I'm not an employee, right? That, oh, that <laughs> some people are. Some people, we need people to be mm -hmm. employees, right? That's yeah. some people, they like the security of what's known and somebody else has taken the responsibility for their pay and all of those kind of things. But for people who like just struggle, maybe their whole career with that, th that may be a sign they make a good entrepreneur, that they can go do something and think for themselves and do their own thing and, and, and right, that, that, that they take a risk, right? There's all, all that part of that. You, 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 you know, it's, it's, it, you're either an entrepreneur from the beginning or you're, or, you know, you're, you're an employee. I, I remember trying to, in between jobs at one point that I worked for the government, and, and employees were saying to me, slow down, you're making us look bad. <laughs> right. You know, and I'm going, I can't, yeah. I don't know how to do that. I have work to yeah. do, I get it done, right? So, yeah. but yeah, you're either an employee or you're not. Right. And, and so then you're coming on. Yeah. Tour. Yeah, right. And, and um, you talked about uh, setbacks or failures, right? That's part of being an entrepreneur too. I mean, you, yeah. everybody's not successful in everything they do. Most entrepreneurs no, and, try and many things. It doesn't matter how successful you are. You're always going to fail at something, right? You right. can't be yeah. good at everything in your business. Um, you just have to try and be as smart as possible. When I was in that business, it was called the executive suite. There weren't any small business organizations to help. I was yeah. doing it on my own. Mm. And so I was flying basically by the seat of my pants and I did it stupidly. I mean, I just, you know, I went in, I knew that what I wanted to do and everything, but when you're up against, and I shouldn't say stupidly, but when you're up against a large corporation that really doesn't care about you and can use the space for somebody else, right. then you, you don't have any hope no, when you've right. got somebody like that. Right. The, the third thing you mentioned, I think is so important is you said you had, you had support when you went back to your husband the second time ago, I think you just started a business again, right? Some people would say, are you crazy? In a way you're not doing that, but you had the support and talk about how important support is when you go do this. Well, if you don't have support, you don't have anything, right? Yeah. I mean, you can't, as, as I learned and, and, you know, when I did, I was in uh, knowing I had some financial difficulty with that executive suite. I wasn't sharing it with my husband, okay, <laughs> which was really wrong. Yeah, you know, right. share everything, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, right? Yeah. And so, you know, you really have to um, have that support to help you through it. And, you know, I, it was, I was letting him make that decision whenever I said I want to do it again. And he said, I don't need to, like, I, I don't need to think about it. Just go and do it. And you know, I was very fortunate in that way that I wasn't really starting over again, because what happened is that the morning after, so there was this kind of, uh, my, my boss had said to me, um, I, w I went in and asked for a raise. They weren't paying me very much and I needed it because I had all this debt, right? So I went in and I asked, you know, I want you to increase my salary. And one of the owners, there were three partners and one of them said, you aren't worth it. Oh. And I went. Okay. And that's when I made a phone call. Yeah. And then I went to one of the bosses and, and to the, one of the other ones that him and I got along really well. And he said, I said, Bob, I'm leaving. 
Uh, and he says, it's probably a good idea. <laughs> and, and we stayed in touch after that. But what I did was I didn't tell anyone that day. But the next morning, I called one of my clients and told her that I wasn't there anymore. And I was waiting for her to give me a contract. And she said, why didn't you call me sooner? I just called them and told them that they had the contract. I didn't know you had left. And I said, well, why don't you call them back and tell them that you want to give me the contract? <laughs> and she said, okay. And she did. And she was a yeah. great client for years after that. Yeah. Like it was just, right. you know. And so, you know, you need that support. But also what you need, and I think this is really more important than most things, is you build a relationship yes. with yeah. your customers. Right, right. And they're going yeah. to hopefully stick with you. Right, right. The, no, the, it's, the, it's, it's all about yeah. relationships too. Exactly, yeah. And and that ties into this fourth thing that I, I picked up that you said in your introduction there about being a, you know, we use the term solopreneur sometimes, right? Because you've got the, your business was one person, three million a year. I mean, that's, that's amazing. But, uh, right, as the entrepreneur maybe have a whole team around them. And a solopreneur is like a one person show. Not really. I mean, they have support and they have other things, but they're really kind of a one person business. Um, and we were talking before we started a little bit and you're being vulnerable about like, you know, some of the things that you're not great at. And, and you were saying, and, and I think that's part of embracing being a solopreneur is like, you, to be successful, you don't have to be great at everything. You no. can't be great at everything. No, right? you, you can't. No. You can't. Can you speak to kind of how you've, I mean, how does one person, and, and I know it's not one person, because you will you'll talk about other people that are helping you, which are your your relationships that you just mentioned, or your clients and that kind of thing that you invested in. Um, how, how does a solopreneur get to the place where they can be that successful? I mean, what are the what are the things that you think that are part of that? Well, you have to have the support, okay? And so that three million dollar business, I had contractors, okay. I did the marketing. I did all the sales calls. I did all the contracts and everything else. And I hired people to do it. And I had, uh, there was about eight different contractors that I had working for, for me. And so it, um, so you can't do it alone. It was a lot of work for me because of all, you know, managing eight different projects. There was one year that um, it, it was really a burnout because I had taken on, it's the, it was the two largest, the biggest contracts that the federal government in Canada ever put out. And I did it right from the writing, editing, translation, research, everything right up to these two publications. And even with the contractors that I had, it was mind boggling trying to keep in track on top of it all. But they weren't the only projects I was working on too. So it was just, just the, the mind never stopped. Okay. And um, I guess I did sleep, but you know, you, you can't do it on your own. I mean, even mm. with that, there was a lot. So, um, but yeah, you can't do it alone. And I'm guessing by what you just said that sales and marketing, that's your wheelhouse. That's really what you, that's your, that's where, that's what your passion is. That's what your strength is. And so you go hard on that and then you kind of contract out or get support for the other pieces that you need to do to get along. Like you're, you're not going to, you're talking about being technically challenged. Like you're not going to spend three months figuring out your own website. You're just not going to do that. That would interfere oh. with you selling into <laughs> and, <laughs> your thing. No. Right? Yeah. No, no, right. I, I don't even, I mean, I do my, you know, once, once the changes have been made, the graph changes and everything like that, I will update it on my own, yeah. but that's it. And it's very simple what I do because that's just, no, that it's a waste of time for me. Right. Um, you know, and, and, but it's some things that you do have to do. That's right. You know, you're, and as an entrepreneur, whether you have contractors or whoever working with you, there's still work you have to do and you may not like doing yeah. it all. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, that's good. Um, well, let, let's shift into the, the age of entrepreneurs, the, the age of the entrepreneur, I should say, not the age of entrepreneurship, but the age of the entrepreneur. Uh, when somebody, you know, there's young guys that are, you know, leaving college because they want to go be an entrepreneur, like this college isn't necessary, I'm gonna, I'm, you know, and they've done that. But we're talking more in our audience, it gets it up right of, of the over 50 group that says, hey, look, maybe I've had a career, I've done other things. Uh, I'm in the retirement age, but I'm not going to retire because I don't think I can do that. But I've got an opportunity to make some new choices and do some things that I want to do. What would you? What do you say to that stage of life as far as entrepreneurship goes? Because there's such an there's such an opportunity still there. There's such a uh, an appeal there still. So. 
I think that, you know, if you have any inclination of ever wanting to be a business owner or an entrepreneur, one and the same as far as I'm concerned, but people disagree with me on that one. <laughs> um, you, you need to explore it. Um, retirement is it's not in my wheelhouse at all. Um, and so you and I know a lot of people retire. And wish they hadn't. I have a neighbor here. She just couldn't wait to retire. Couldn't wait to retire. I've been talking to her a couple of times. She said, I hate it. I hate it. It's not what I expected at all. And, and it's only been two or three months. Yeah. Right? So before you retire, start really seriously thinking of what you want to do or may want to do um, and, and explore it. Talk to people. Okay. Start taking some courses or classes. Go online. I mean, there's so much stuff that can help you in, in um, um, sorry, somebody is sending me, the, I, my chat's coming up and I'm seeing questions, so sorry. Um, anyways, yeah, it's, it's um, you have to explore, you have to find out what you really want. And you know what, if you become an entrepreneur and you start out small and it's not for you, if you decide that, okay, it's really not for you, then just stop it. It doesn't cost a whole lot of money to start a business now. That right, is the good right. thing about it, right? Yeah, I mean, right, you can right. get, and, and it's finding um, people that you want to work with um, that will help you with your website, might help you with, you know, uh, the lean model. Well, you've, you've got the uh, accelerator to help everyone. So, mm -hmm. you know, everybody is, is really learning from you. Right. Yes. Right. It, maybe can you, can you help um, our learners open their mind to the immense po possibilities when you think of entrepreneurship, right? I mean, there's, because sometimes people think being a business owner is like, oh gosh, I don't want all that headache. Like I, I, I've been entrepreneurial my whole adult life and I'm very, keep it very low maintenance, like low overhead. Like I don't want a lot of overhead. I don't want all the headaches of that. That's part of what, you know, I don't, I don't want. I saw that in big business working in big corporations. I'm like, I, I don't want yeah. that. Right. And, and there's ways you can outsource everything. You don't even have to do the work. If you can solve the problem, yeah. You, you can outsource things, right? You There's just so many things. ways to do it. Yeah. But you can, you still have to manage it and managing yeah. it can be a bit of a, a hassle too. And as, as an example, so I, I always take on too much work. Always. <laughs> and I, so I've decided to start streamlining myself and I hired a virtual assistant. I had been looking for one for a while okay. and I found Good. this virtual assistant who I really, really like. Um, but then it was having to, prepare all the work for her to keep going at her. And, you know, I'm thinking, okay, well, where's my time? What, what am yeah. I saving by doing this? You know, mm -hmm. she was doing a lot of things that I had wanted her to do, but it was this constant having to keep her employed that way. Um, and now I'm missing her because um, she was a medical student. She's from um, Albania. They have changed things around. And so she's had to take a leave from me for a couple of months. So now I'm going, Oh, what am I going to do? I've just had to, you know, revamp of what I'm now focusing on. And, right. uh, you know, I'm trying to streamline things a whole lot. I am. Yeah. I'm not, right. uh, I'm 71 years old. I'm getting a little tired of, of all of the, you know, the, the busyness all the time. I mean, I want right. to do, I'm never going to stop working. I don't think, yeah. but you know, so it's, it's just you know, streamlining, um, making lists, make a list. I try to make a list every day of what I need to be done and the prioritize right. them. Yeah. Right. And that seems yeah. to make it work, but you know, you can really get in too heavy. So don't do that. Yeah. You, you, we could talk a minute about scaling, right? You, you, you can scale up, you can scale down, uh, kind of, you're kind of controlling the throttle a little bit on how much you want to take on versus how big it gets by, right. How busy it gets. Yeah, and it sounds like you're starting to do that a little bit. Like, hey, as, as you get older, you're like, hey, I don't really want to work this hard. <laughs> this isn't really what I want to be doing. And yeah, I want well, to keep working, but I don't want to be working this hard. Well, even even what I'm doing now, which, I mean, I want to update my book, okay? okay. And I've, I've got two or three chapters in the works, but I haven't touched them for months because there's so many other things that need to be done. And so that, and, and as well as that book, I want to write another book. Okay. Okay. Um, and maybe even a third book. So, you know, that's, so you, you really have to prioritize what you want to do and you need to have dates down there. Okay. Right. So I'm going to do this and this is the amount of time and, you know, you just have to work towards it. Right. It also makes a difference. Um, the one challenge that I have is that my husband is um, retired. I work from home 
and he wishes I was retired. And and there's lots of times he'll come in to my office. And well, I'll give you an example. So the other day I was I was I was I'm starting a new podcast and I was getting my questions ready for you know the questions I wanted to ask. And we're planning, we're going away in a couple of weeks. And he came in here and he kept talking to me about going away and going away and going away. And I was like, I'm trying to get my questions and I'm trying to get my questions. And it was just going over his head. So, so maybe, maybe one thing I could suggest if you're working from home, um, put a lock on your door. <laughs> the support becomes too much. It becomes a distraction. Right? <laughs> I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Do you have, I mean, in working, uh, working with people over 50 and uh, helping them become entrepreneurs and through your books and your teaching and presentations. Can you share any success stories? Can you say, you know, this lady did this or this guy did that. Do you have any favorite stories of success that you could share with us? I'm not going to share them just necessarily for me. I'm going to share. So I, I'm not sure whether you know that I do the 50 over 50 awards. Okay. I haven't done them. I've stopped doing them, but I want to pick them up again. But I did the 50 over 50 awards for three years that recognize and celebrate 50 Canadian entrepreneurs each year that started a business after the age of 50. Okay. Good. So one woman, 64 years old, brought the internet to Alberta. Okay. Okay. At 64 years old. And she's still working there all of these years later. I think she's in her, her late eighties, I think. Um, I've got, there is a, and, and, and there's such a vast variety of what people are doing. Um, there is um, women that, and a lot of intergenerational companies are husband and wife teams. Okay. They've retired. Many of them are building apps. Okay. okay? And, and so uh, a couple of them, it, and they go from the industry that they're in. So there was one that is, um, they worked in the chemical industry. So now they've developed an app on how to, to protect yourself from these chemicals whenever you're working. Um, there is someone, I'm trying to go across the province. Uh, the podcast I did was uh, with Mindful Garden and uh, she, they are doing a digital virtual um, device for uh, people that uh, have dementia and delirium. And that's, they are wonderful. Like their company is just fantastic. They've got three different generations. So she's over 50, she's got one under 40 and one under 30. I think it's under 30. Yeah. So, you know, that, that's just some examples. I've got a woman that is doing health dog food. I got somebody else that's doing gluten-free stuff. I got a breweries. I've got what other technical companies I have one winner that actually did a microphone for dance shoes. Okay. <laughs> Whenever you're, do, you know, dancing uh, on, on stage. Um, so you could hear it. Um, there is, Oh gosh. I should have had a whole bunch more of these prepared because there's so, you know, there's, there's a lot of different, some are doing coaching. Um, some are doing research. Um, have I got any authors? There's one that was an author. She was writing her book. Um, so uh, accelerators, different types of accelerators. Some of them are franchise owners, you know, it's all just right. such a cross of what they're doing. In that, in the process of doing that award, have you found any common threads or, themes for these people of, of everybody's no, different I know but most of them have just, yeah um I guess had decided that they just wanted to do something different that you know they they um just left their jobs or some of them were unemployed or they just you know I always say there's three types of entrepreneurs over the age of 50 they're the ones that can't wait to retire okay and start the business they've always wanted to do then there are the ones that um retire whether it's out of necessity or they just it's their time's up and they kind of just don't know what to do and so I call them the reluctant entrepreneurs because <laughs> they aren't quite there yet and then there are the ones that um, are entrepreneurs out of necessity they don't have enough money they don't know where to start they don't uh, so they're doing it just because there's no other way to do it of, of making a living right right um, you know what what Unfortunately, that last group, um, and that, you know, this is the main reason why I wrote my book, was one woman came up to me one day, I was at a show, and she had developed her, uh, a product for a wheelchair. And she said to me, how am I going to market it? And she had no idea about marketing at all. And I mentioned, and 
I'm assuming that you will probably know of this company, Shopify. Mm -hmm. Okay. I said, well, Shopify. And she just looked at me with a blank stare. And I'm going, okay. Then I talked to her about a few other things. And I figured, okay. So I'm assuming, because I've been around for so long, that, um, goodbye, Bridget. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know how to, how my chat is always popping up. Okay. Um, so, you know, you, you, it's hard for people when they don't know where to start and right. there wasn't any books. I couldn't find any book out there that would guide them and show them what needed to be done to even give them the um, chance to say yes or no before they jumped into it. Right. Well, I mean, I think what, what I heard you say on the, the common theme was the passion piece, right? I think that's so, so important because you're going to have days where you don't want get, to get up and do stuff, but that's what gets you out of bed. It's like, well, I, I have a reason to do this. I have a why, right? Have, there's, there's motivation for this, even, even when it's hard. Uh, it's just so hard to keep going when you don't have that because the hard days just drag you down into nothing. Yeah. And so you have to have that, that passion to be there. But uh, probably, I, my guess is, and, 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 and if you've seen this, many people will have an idea it's a great idea, but they, they so talk themselves out of it because they don't know A to Z, everything that they have to do to get it done. Or even, yeah. even there's so many elements to it, right? I mean, there's the, the concept, the production, the, the selling of it, the, the distribution of it. The, I mean, there's so many pieces to it. And, and like, they think they have to know all of that. And since they don't, they give up. They're like, I, I can't do this. You eventually do need to know a little bit about everything. Yeah. But yeah. you can't when you're first starting out. I right, mean, you right. have to know the basics, you know, right. and then you build from there. You, you just cannot do it all at once. Right. You, you, you just don't put yourself in that because you know what? You are going to be so tired and so burnt out that your business is going to be closed in no time at all. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So you wrote the book to, to, do, to help people with that, to kind of give them the tools, the, the tips, the tricks to kind of, uh, speed up the learning curve a little bit to kind of to get up to speed to, to get out there. Uh, it, that book is out. Can people get that? Is there a way they can get to that? I have a copy of it here to show you. <laughs> we have to come to your house to get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting. The doorbell's right down in the box. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, it's available on my website. If you're so, it's available in print and ebook format. Okay. If you're in Canada and you want a print version, then buy it from me. Uh, if the eBooks can all, whether you no, no matter where you are, can be can be uh, purchased from my website. But if they're also available on Amazon. Okay. Um, right. And then there's a few other places, but it's mostly Amazon. Okay. All right. And it's it look for a wiser, the definitive guide to start a business. So, yeah. Right. It's it's okay. a short title. Okay. <laughs> I always say it's a short title. Next one's going to be shorter. Um, but yeah, and it's it's most people are buying it from Amazon or else on my website. So I okay. just I always say it's it's um, buying it if you're in Canada, buy it from my website. If you're not in Canada, buy it from Amazon. Okay. Or right. as I or if you want the digital version, you can buy it on my website as well, and I can get it delivered to you. And the digital that's like an ebook or. Ebook, yeah, on? and it's available okay. as a PDF, uh, Mobi and EPUB. And of course, Mobi okay. is um, going by the wayside apparently. So okay, all right. You don't have an audio. And, uh, you, you don't have an audio version of it. No, I haven't done an audio version. My audio version will be whenever I update it. Okay, good, good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, what do you What are your thoughts about having a mentor, or a coach in the process and the journey? You have to. You have to, you know, you, you, um, I went a long time without having, them. I always have people I can talk to, but you know, whenever I talk to somebody, they wouldn't necessarily be considered a mentor or whatnot, but I now have two different mentors that, um, I, I talk to and, you know, depending on what I want to talk to them about is which one I decide to go with. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of them is in the same age group as I am and in the same field where the other one, um, He's not in that at all, but I mean, he's, he's in my age group, but it's just, you know, it's, it's just business with him that, um, and it's, and I love having him. I can just, you know, just send them an email. I need to pick your brain. And right. so, yeah, everybody should have somebody that they can talk to because your head can get so full <laughs> that you, 
you think it's going to burst and you're, yeah. and you know, you have 10 different ideas in your head and they're going all over the place and you're going, what am I going to do? That's when you need your advisor or mentor. Right. Right. Good. And they're not going to tell you what to do. It's they make you make your own decision, right? They right. all make suggestions and uh, it's either, it's up to you to decide whether you want to do it or not. Right. But that sounding board, that perspective, all of those things are that support, you know, they, they care about the best interest of you. So they're not yeah. trying to lead you astray. Yeah. Right. That's good. That's good. Um, how important is social media to being an entrepreneur uh, in a business? Not every business is different, but it seems like uh, one of the things that makes becoming starting a business so easy now is that the internet provides this level playing field for so many people. You don't have to have a brick and mortar place. You can sell things online, but to communicate to people, uh, a lot of communication, a lot of promotion, a lot of marketing is done through social media. You know, there's this organic form through social media that you could do. You could pay for it too, but there's there's free and paid options. How important is social media, you think, in being successful today? I, the only, so when I had my virtual assistant, okay, was using all of the social media platforms. I'm a LinkedIn person. I like okay. LinkedIn. Um, I will post on Facebook sometimes, but, you know, it's, uh, it's to me. And I think it's because I'm a face-to-face -face person that I have never grasped and want to use social media that much. And I really don't think that it makes all that amount of difference to me okay. in my to in you. my business anyways. Right, you know, right. when, when you're going and looking for, and depending on the age group of your customer or your client, right, you have to see where they hang out. Yeah, and, right. you know, if, if it's not on Instagram or Twitter, then why? I mean, older people do um, are on Facebook. So I do Facebook. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, LinkedIn. Right. Yeah. So I think I agree with you. It, it's really your business specific. It's industry specific. It depends yeah. what it is. I mean, very few industries do you need to be on every platform. <laughs> it's really just not that likely. No. Um, and, I, and I just, I like that one-on-one. -on -one. I really yeah. do like that one-on-one. -on -one. And and that's the way I've always built my businesses on one-on-one. -on -one. I'm still having, you know, one of my best clients from years ago. Um, her, like I haven't, we haven't caught, talked in I don't know how long. We're having lunch in a couple of weeks. You know, somebody else on LinkedIn the other day that was a client from years ago too. Hi, Wendy. So nice to see you. You know, I follow you. I love what you do. You're just such an energetic person. And I know that if she was still in the same business, I could do business with her again. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, you're exactly right. The relationship part is so important. And this is what an older entrepreneur has over a younger entrepreneur. If oh. they've done if they've done life well, right? They have built social equity with with friends, with clients, with customers. And that is what really will help you carry on because the best promotion is always a satisfied customer. Somebody says, Hey, Wendy's fantastic. You need to talk to Wendy, right? You need to check out the her book, whatever. That yeah, that's that's what our age does for us if we've done it well, right? Oh, exactly. We, we, we grew up with communication skills. <laughs> Real ones. You know? yeah, right. and, yeah. and, you know, sometimes Wait. you just, you know. You, you mean get... texting? You mean texting, Wendy? I, I, I have a pen that I use. <laughs> I hate texting. I'm, I'm trying right. to get as fast as they are on TV, you know, whenever you're show, doing a show, watching a show and they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. No, that's not me. Right, no. right. Yeah. So, I mean, if somebody's ever thinking, hey, I'm too old to start a business. No, if you have relationships and you've done really well and you can leverage that to, in a good, healthy way to help your business, you're you're way ahead of somebody who's starting out younger that doesn't have it. You are. And and the one thing, though, I always tell people, too, that everybody says, you know, you have to build your network. Yes, you have to build your network. But you know what? While you were working for somebody else, you had a network. Yeah. Right? So right. you take your con and I can say this to everyone on this call. I know you take your roller decks with me. Sometimes I say roller decks. <laughs> they don't know what you mean. <laughs> they, they think, oh, you mean Rolex. You mean Rolex watch. Rolex. No, Rolex. <laughs> no, that's my, that's my watch, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, because you know what? Those, those contacts, you may not think at this point, and this is regardless of whether you were actually thinking of becoming an entrepreneur or not. Just take your contacts with you because you never know when you want something that, oh, I know that person and I can call them. And again, it goes back to having that relationship with them. And, 
you know, and, and even if they may not know what you want, but they'll know somebody that they can tell you about. Right. Right. That's right. That's right. That's true. That's right. Yeah. Um, I think even I, I encourage people to be entre- entre- entrepreneurial minded. So if somebody is, hey, I'm really an employee. I'm a, I know I'm that person more so than an entrepreneur. But I, I like having some entrepreneurial ideas and mindsets. They could serve as an entrepreneur inside their organization, right? They could be the one who's kind of thinking outside the box and, and doing some things and helping things grow and still be inside that organization if that's what suits them best. Or, you know, a lot of people think, I'm going to retire and I'm going to start a nonprofit. Well, I'm, I, I work for nonprofits. I love nonprofits, but we don't need more nonprofits. We need more nonprofits to work together. We need more people to work together in nonprofits. We don't need more nonprofits. If we've got, you know, 5,000 nonprofits, you know, to help a very worthy cause, but we don't need 5,000 of them to do that. We need to kind of come together. And, and can, you, can you leverage that kind of entrepreneurial mindset in life, whether it's your own business or working alongside others through volunteerism and other things? I think you can. Okay. It's just, I mean, a lot of people though, that in, in my thinking anyways, with who are volunteers are doing it because they have nothing else that they want to do. Right. And so, which there's anything wrong with that. Um, but you can certainly, I, and I think at this time, I want to bring in when, when you were talking about this whole thing, it's a collaboration, right? Yeah. So you have yeah. all of these companies these non-for-profits well collaborate with each other right right. and make it better for everyone um and and you know if if maybe maybe at one point you merge and and as long as you are moving forward doing something satisfying and helpful to others then make it work yeah I don't right. think I really answered the question. <laughs> I've um, I like to take complex things and make them simple for myself, and then try to share with other people. And and one of the things I, I keep beating the drum on, I keep going back to, is what entrepreneurs do, what business people do, is they solve a problem for somebody else. Right? Fundamentally, that's what people are paying for you is to solve a problem. And mm-hmm. if you can find a problem that maybe you can't, you couldn't get solved, but you figure out how to do it, now you've got a business idea. And whether you do it or have somebody else do it, that's that's up to you. Uh, and that's where I think some of the passion comes. Or you're just passionate. You're an advocate for something. Or you're just so passionate about some cause or some need or something. Like, I want to solve this problem. And you just go down that path until you find a way to help solve or remedy that problem. Now you're being entrepreneurial. You're, you're really helping bring that together. And then, you know, then you read your book and you figure out how you connect the dots and you put all this together. But it, it really starts there. This passion, this solving the problem. And, the, you know, people will pay you for that because you're helping solve a problem that they need. Yeah. It, and, it's you know, in this industry in Canada, OK, um, and I don't know how much it is in the States. I think there's a lot more support for people in the States. But the reason I started the 50 over 50 awards is because I was told that we will never amount to anything. We are going to work for the federal government. We're going to retire. We're going to start a consulting business and go back and work in the previous job. Um, two things with that. Number one, you are, you are going to amount to something because you are going to be doing what you really want to do, Mm -hmm. um, on your own terms. And also you're adding to the economy. Okay. Um, and I prove the reason I did the awards was to prove that one person that told me that wrong, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and I just wanted to take all of the winners and just email them to them and say, look (laughs) what we're doing. I have been advocating to try and get the same support uh, for all age groups for entrepreneurs. They will not recognize the 50 plus group. Mm. They will not. And it's, and it is so frustrating. Um, I did the second year. I think I did the awards. I brought together the Canadian Federation of independent business and Canadian chamber of commerce, the two largest business groups in Canada to sit down with the winners as well as on um, people from the government, okay? And so each, and there were about half of the winners that came to Ottawa from across Canada. And so they got to introduce themselves and tell them what the challenges were that they were facing. And we educated those organizations and government officials that they were so impressed with what we were doing, they were, we were all doing. 
but yet nothing has still come of it. Hmm. You know, and, oh. and so it, it's really frustrating. Um, but that's why I just keep advocating. Like, I guess I, I, I'm, I don't understand with the amount of advocating I do that they aren't tired of me and will find me. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably just this close to breaking through, so stay at it. You're maybe, probably close. Maybe. I actually, I, I am now a um, community leader with Startup Canada for the 50 plus group. And mm. um, they are, you know, working with me to make some differences. And so yeah. I just sent them a whole list of things that, that is an issue here. And so they, I mean, they're su such a large organization that hopefully they'll be able to make some headway. Right, right. So you're going to reinstate the fit the, the that award program. I'm sure probably COVID probably interfered with that. And that's probably why you had to. No, actually what, what it interfered with it was it took nine months of my time and I was paying for them all myself. Oh, okay. Sometimes you just have to give your head a shake or you give the head a What am I doing? You know, yeah. So okay. I mean, there was a couple, you know, there was a, there was a two years, there was a, you know, a couple of small sponsors, but, you know, nine months of my time is yeah, that's is a lot. Yeah. ridiculous. So, right, um, right. I, but people keep asking me, they want, they want me to start them again. So yeah, you just and need I'd some fun. I mean, I, I've met so many wonderful people. Right. That's good uh, to celebrate that and to recognize those people. That's encouraging others to see people, you know, take risks and be successful and, yeah. and work through those things. You you talked a little bit about this new this new thing you're working on. That's supposed to you know come out this year. Maybe it has already. Um, the intergenerational program. Can you talk a talk, tell us about that? Yes, it is on hold. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's so right. I know that 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 there is a need. Okay. okay. So. Um, there are globally it's it's becoming really critical be, uh for something like this because 80 percent of companies worldwide do not have a succession plan in place and so um they don't have a succession plan they don't know where to go to find somebody they don't know a whole lot of things and so what they're doing is just closing their businesses yep. which is you know causing things um uh, you know, the economy, unemployment, you name it, they're doing it. So yeah. that what I wanted to do with it was, you know, it was um, do this matching and I still want to do it. But I had, you know, really some serious conversations with some people that are in this SaaS life. And one of them said to me, Wendy, it's going to be three years before you see anything. And I'm 71 and I'm thinking, okay, do I really, really want to be doing something like this in four or in three or four years? So, but as I say, it's not, it's on the back burner. Um, okay. I have somebody else that is interested in working with me on it, okay. uh, that I just did not want to take the reins of it because it was going sure. to be such a huge, huge right. investment. And, and, it was, I said, and I had to be looking for investment for it as well. So. Yeah. So it's all around solving the succession problem that doesn't, <laughs> that's so poorly handled in companies. It, it was trying to address that. Yeah. And, and, and yes, because and okay. it was what it was going to be and what may still be is, you know, entrepreneurs over the age of 50 who don't have a co-founder or somebody to take over their business right. under the age of 40. So that's what it was going to be. It was a matching program like that. Okay. Um, there's a there's certainly a need because we've got to stop this, you know, the succession planning of not having. But, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day and he said, you know, part of the problem is that people um, don't have a succession plan in place or they can't find a co-founder because their businesses are old. Okay, yeah, right. and, and, <laughs> And, and I mean, like old as, as the businesses are old, they haven't updated anything on it, right? Yeah, right. So a young entrepreneur isn't going to come in and want to take over something that is in such disarray or yeah. old and needs right. to update right. everything else. So, yeah. Yeah. And yes. there's also a professor here in Ottawa, just, um, he just uh, published his book on succession planning. And I was talking to him about this. And he said, when do young entrepreneurs want to work for themselves? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, no, I think so. that I, I was really fascinated in succession planning many years ago, working in some large organizations and, and, and um, nobody does it well. Nobody really does it well. It's really, uh, it, it's very rare that you see an organization do that really well. And I think what you just said is so true in that 
as as easy as it, it, it's become so much easier to start something new than it ever was, right? It, 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 it's not this, we don't have this uh, old company regime of all these established things that have been around for hundreds of years and, you know, it would take forever to catch up. You could, you could, you could become wildly successful overnight. I mean, not likely, but you could now, you could right? And, mm-hmm. and so, yeah, so who wants to like inherit all these, you know, generational problems mm-hmm. of this organization mm-hmm. that is not going to go away just because the leader changed, right? I know. So, yeah, so that makes happy. sense. Like, I, I'm going to go do something else. And to some degree, it's probably good. We purge some of these companies. They they just, they've, they've done their time and they need to go on. But it is disruptive to your point. I mean, people lose their jobs. They got to start all over again. It affects that community. I mean, you could look around some of our cities in both of our yeah. countries, right? Where the whole city's changed from what it was 50 years ago because- Oh yeah, no, right exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's you know, it's a real issue of, you know, what is going to happen. And um, on my podcast, whenever I was talking to uh, the Mindful Garden people, I asked them about the succession plan, which they're working on. She said, what's even more important to them is having an exit strategy. Right, right. That's the new one. So, right? you know, that's, that's yeah. yeah. So let's not wait right. for the succession. You know, she said she thinks that that this will be her last business. So, yeah. yeah. So and it's I mean, her type of business, it's not like a consulting business. If somebody had that, that you can close down because right. it's really you. And, you know, yeah. th- your clients can find right. somebody else or you can refer them to somebody. But when they have invested this amount of money in, into the project and, you know, there's it, it's just such a vast, vast project that right. they're working on or business. And uh, yeah, like they, they just can't let that go. I got a couple of questions in the chat here. Um, mm-hmm. Someone said, can you recommend a book, website, or other resources on succession planning? Do you have anything that you would point anybody to that you've? I wish I wish I did. Um, <laughs> I'm not aware of much out there. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there is. Um, I'd have to. Um, I can I can send this to you, Kevin, um, because I'm not sure of the website where to get the one that um, the professor just put out. Okay. Um, I did, there is a, a company that does web, webinars um, here in Canada. It's called Sigma. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, they are do succession planning. Um, they, I, I was disappointed on their webinar because I asked the question about, you know, if, if I, I have a succession plan in place with my husband to take it over. What he'll do with it, I don't know. Um, and I'll be dead, so I won't know. Um, <laughs> but, you know, if, if, you know, who are you going to find to take it over and you don't have anything to say about it or, you know, it's it's just so what do you do, right? Yeah. Go, so it's, yeah. it's, I, 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 anyways, so what I was okay. going to say there, sorry, was that, if you're a one person organization like I am, um, I talked to Sigma and I said, so what do you do uh, whenever you're, you know, a single person? They had no idea. They had no suggestions <laughs> on what to do, right? That's, that was a right. bit disappointing that, you know, and, they, and what their suggestion is, if, if you are doing, um, if you have a company that has several employees and you choose them early and you just groom yeah. them until such right. time as you're ready to go. I've got a, it's kind of a business side hobby. I like to cycle and I've got this thing I've been doing. It's a ride I do every year that's real popular and I'm coming up on 30 years and I finally last year decided I'm ready to let it go. I mean, I kept thinking, how do I, what's the succession plan? Part of it was I couldn't find somebody that shared the same passion and love for what I was doing and they weren't going to do it the same way I did it. Not not that they had it exactly like I, but they couldn't even carry on the spirit of it. I didn't identify anybody. And the lack of that, I'm no, I'm left with nothing else than how do I put together an exit strategy? And how do you go out well? Because I don't like how things finish poorly. I hate organizations that just finish poorly, right? That's just sad, <laughs> really sad. So, but it happens uh, a lot, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm crescendoing mine into a 30-year anniversary where I, I it's the end. So I'm two years away from that. I'm announcing it and doing that. But it was a one-man show. I mean, I have a team around me, but I'm like you, it's like I, if, nobody st- if there's nobody there, then you're not going to hand it off to somebody who's going to go all the other direction. They might as well do their own thing. <laughs> And, and, you know, I think that, too, another thing to take into account um, is that the person that is taking over, how are they going to change it? Like, I know that, I'll, and I'm, I'm not bragging or saying anything, but I know that a lot of people really like my energy, really like my personality. 
Um, and, you know, the one thing that I'm, I'm told quite often is that, you know, how authentic I am and honest, which is means right. a great deal to me. Yeah. Um, but if somebody comes in and takes over and takes over the name of the company and everything right. else, but doesn't have yes. what everybody is used to, yes. and that can cause issues. And you might put <laughs> right. that your business, even though you're not part <laughs> of it, may go down the tubes, right? But you, and th well, that's a reflection on you still, even though you're not there, it's still no, your exactly. business. Exactly. Right? You don't like, want that. I didn't, I didn't choose the right person to take over. Yeah. The like, why did I do that? Yeah. <laughs> what are better just to close the doors? What in the world did I do? Right. Oh, what else in here? Um, Adele was talking about uh, funding the business. Sometimes it seems like it's going to be just a side hustle now. Um, yeah. Speak real quick about timing. Like, you know, things don't go as we think time wise. Right. We, I mean, even if it slows down, I mean, we've all been disrupted the last two years. I mean, it's been yeah. crazy. Everything's been turned upside down. It's like, well, you don't give up. You just keep doing what you can and you um, keep pushing forward. Um, I think as long as you have the passion, you keep going, right? I mean, that's it. it, it yeah. And, and you have to, you know, you have your passion and you have to, you know, keep your face out there in front of people. Like if you are on social media, they need to see you. They need to know that you are around all the time. But, you know, we talk about the passion and whatnot. I've, um, my I've had severe back problems for a couple of months now and I'm in constant pain. Um, and so my passion isn't like what normally is um, and, and which bothers me. But, you know, there's just some days that I just they come into my office and I don't even want to do I force myself to do stuff. But that passion isn't there. Yeah, because of, you know, and you've got to look after your health. That's, right, that's right. the one thing. Yeah. And if it means that you aren't in your office or you aren't you know, doing that, finishing that deadline that you've put upon yourself, then you're just going to have to let it go. Right. And uh, looks like Lee had a nice response to Adele in the chat. Lee, those were good. Those good ideas too there to, to keep going. Sometimes even slowing down helps us re reset and to repivot and to fo focus and realign what we need to be doing. That's helpful too. Uh, reset the time. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm going away in, in a week for two weeks and I, yes, I am taking my computer with me, but um, I am not going to be doing a whole lot of work because we're used to traveling too, which is, which is, you know, I've always worked whenever I've been away, but um, gosh, I can't wait to go away. It's been three or four years. Now since we've been gone, so. <laughs> Need it. Yes. Right. Uh, all right. I think we're running uh, low on time here. Anybody else have a question? Uh, Leslie asked, she had in her community uh, a similar thing where they had an over 50 plus job program, but it all dried up and went away. She said, can you provide any advice on how to find others who have a passion like yours in, in their community? How do you kind of bolster people that have that kind of interest? Do you have any tips on that? You mean, you, you mean a personality like mine that to help people <laughs> start businesses or what do you mean by that? Well, I, don't I, th I think it was more of a, a getting excitement around support for the over 50 workers and that kind of thing. Is everybody on this call in the US? No, let, let me just, I'm familiar Not with Canada. Mostly, mostly, but some, some there may be some Canadians too. Okay, uh, no, so it's just because I'm, I'm not a whole lot of, you know, familiar with what you can do yeah. where you can go in the States and whatnot, but you right. know, they're there to try and find people. There are, there are organizations will always get set up that you know you help people with their business um and you know there's are there people like me i'm one of a kind <laughs> <laughs> i just try to think of uh you know there there are some people in the u.s i just you know it depends on whether you're trying to go back into the workforce or whether you're trying to start a business um Regardless of if, if you're starting a business, it doesn't really matter who you're talking to, whether it's in Canada, US, UK, because there's so many organizations around. Um, yeah. The one thing that I would um, caution you with, if you are looking for someone for support, for someone to help you with your business, make sure, and I'm going to say this, make sure that they have experience in entrepreneurship. There are, you know, there's... We came out with, I mean, I, I, I think because I've been an entrepreneur for years that I was okay to do be switching over to a different group of entrepreneurs, but you know, you see this shiny, oh, look at, they call them seniorpreneurs. Oh, look at that's something new. That's something new. Oh, I'm going to start coaching them. 
how can you coach someone if you've never been an entrepreneur? Like, you know, it's just, you, and, and so many people get caught up in these new businesses that don't really have any experience. So make sure mm -hmm. that you have qualifications from them, everything else before you, before you move forward with them. It's good. It's good. All right. Um, let's see one more here. Lee said, are there municipal or state level small business training centers in Ontario? He joined a regional innovation center funded by the government. Very helpful mentor training. That might've been a response to uh, Leslie's question too. There are yeah. quite a few organizations in Canada that yeah. are, okay. um, you know, and you're saying, in Ontario you're, that are um, doing. You're saying look for those kind of things, yeah. Yeah, and you know, when it comes to training or you know, accelerators or whatever else, um, it you you may think that they're just for young people, and and really, there's very little difference between somebody that is older, starting a business, and a young person. OK, and so, you know, that's that's transitioning. That is, you know, working into, you know, um, being able to work with all different groups of, of, of individuals. You may not have had that before, but, you know, it's it's really, you know, the only thing that you may have. And, and this is one thing I do want to just mention. I know we're we're going to be cutting it off here shortly is um, there's a lot of words around ageism now, a lot of talk about ageism. And somebody said to me one day about um, a client or no, somebody that she wanted to work with. Okay. Um, they said something about ageism and, and she really wanted them as a client. And I said, you don't want to work with someone like that. There are other people that you can work with. Like you don't want to go in with somebody thinking you're old and work right. with them. You know, <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, you know what? And my sister-in-law said it perfectly the other day. I may be old on the outside, but I'm not on the inside. Yeah, right. You know, right. and that's so. Yeah, it's it's just this whole thing. And I yeah. and I really think that even though I faced for the for the actually the second time in my life last week, I was faced with ageism by one of my neighbors. I said again. I got, I got interrupted there. What did you say again? I, I said I faced ageism a couple of weeks ago from the, a young woman down the street, her little daughter who her, she comes and talks to me and, and uh, we go for walks and whatnot. And, and she said to her mom, how come Wendy can't hear me sometimes? Now, if I'm sitting <laughs> on my front porch and she's sitting down on the street by her by the sidewalk, I won't hear. Her. But whenever we're you know walking together, we're fine. And her mother responded and said, Wendy's old and is losing her hearing. I just, I, I was shocked. I was shocked <laughs> that um, number one, I have perfect hearing, but number two, I, I don't consider myself old. I don't, yeah. Good. you know, so, Good. you know, I, I, if you, ha if you face ages and make sure you have a comeback, I did. Right. Yes. Comeback, yeah. But, you know, but yeah. realize that it might be out there. Um, and, you know, do something about it. That's, that's, I mean, we need to be all combating this whole that's right. yeah, word. Right. It's a word that yeah. should be taken out of the vocabulary. Right. Yeah. Sure. There's, there's, so. we have more assets at, with our age than we do liabilities for the most part. We need to think that yeah. way. That should be the I mindset. Just, I, I think what bothered me more than her saying that to me is that she's telling her child. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, and then, so she's going to grow up like that thinking yeah. that. Yeah, so. it's kind of a more of a judgment than it is a fact. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for spending this time with us. It's been really great uh, talking about all this great stuff. I, I love entrepreneurship and many of our learners on the call do as well. Thank you for your story and telling us uh, what you've been through and what you're learning and what you continue to work on. 